My name is Hilburn, not Bonelli. I'm presenting on behalf of uh, lead author Stefano Bonelli, his colleagues at Deep Blue, colleagues at Delft University and CHBR, myself. The work I'm going to be discussing was conducted in the context of the Mahalo project, which is just wrapping up, just finishing now. Mahalo stands for Modern ATM in Human Automation Learning Optimization. It also means thank you in Hawaiian. That's how the, the project name came about. Cesar funded exploratory research. We're wrapping up uh, today. Um, again, the partners Deep Blue, Delft, Linköping University, LFV, the ANSP in Sweden, and CHPR. Um, again, I'm just the messenger, so the, uh, the brilliance is theirs and the mistakes are mine. Uh, the big picture for this work, we all know that AI and machine learning are coming. Um, that's sort of inescapable in everyday life. The question that Mahalo asks is, should we be building AI that's transparent? Everybody's talking about explainability and XAI and so on. Do we need to build transparency that the human can understand? Or do we need to build automation AI that is conformal, that is seems to match, um, in this case, air traffic controller strategies or human strategies? And I say seems to match because we can never quite be sure that it does match exactly. Uh, whether you're talking about a computer carbon-based agent or a silicon human-based agent, you don't understand what the inner process is. I don't know that you're actually not a homicidal maniac. I just see that you, I see your performance and you seem to be a nice person. And from that, I infer underlying processes. Um, but the, the difficulty we have in uh, AI transparency is not unique to carbon agents. The notion here is that transparency and conformance can vary along continuums and they can actually range from high to low. So the worst case being something, some AI is doing a strange thing and you don't know why. Um, it might be doing the right thing, but you really don't know why. You don't know what's going on, but it's getting the right answers and so on. So that's the question that, that Mahalo wanted to answer. And uh, we wanted to do that by actually first building a, an ML system for uh, air traffic control, conflict detection and resolution, CDNR. This project, by the way, builds on earlier work in the Mufasa project. Mufasa asked the same questions about conformance, but Mufasa included a, a big trick a uh, big deception, which is that we faked automation. We took through some clever program, we actually took what controllers did, played it back to them in a way that they couldn't recognize because we would quickly change the call signs and change the traffic pattern. So they didn't recognize what they were seeing was their own solution. Um, when we then asked them if they liked it, 25% of the time they said that's stupid automation, um, even though it was a replay of their own. Um, we found that very interesting. This time though, we wanted to use the same essential design, but try making the machine learning, integrate this with an ATC simulation, and then experimentally test those two factors again. See what impact they had on controller acceptance, agreement, trust workload, and so on. Project flow, we are at this point, we just wrapped up field simulations in Malmö, Sweden uh, about four weeks ago and the, anal the data are being analyzed. So um, I'm going to cherry pick a few preliminary results um, that we've, we've gotten so far, but we're actually writing up the uh, analysis at the moment. Um, Machine learning, in the interest of time, I will say that we used a supervising, supervised learning approach combined with the reinforcement learning approach in different ways. Okay, conformance. Conformance and transparency. These were the two factors that we wanted to vary. Um, 
what we came up with was three levels of conformance, what we called a personal level, a group level, or an optimal level. And I'll explain how those were created later. But basically, in the personal model, each individual had a machine learning uh, architect model based on their performance, learned them, and then, and then advised them later on. In the group model, everybody's performance fed into a single machine learning model, which then advised everybody. So it was a, a many to one mapping, which then advised all controllers in a follow on. And the optimal model, um, a reinforcement learning model, simply starting from the traffic pattern, gave the same advice to everybody. Transparency was manipulated in three ways. Solutions were presented either as just a resolution vector, make your heading that way, or it was presented with a heading and also some three-dimensional explanation of go and no-go zones. As long as you travel in this general area, you're safe. Don't go in that area, you may climb up and so on. And a third level of transparency coupled the diagram with additional text which explained basically um, the target closest point of approach, CPA. I'm doing this to achieve a 6.2 nautical mile separation between these planes. Simulator environment based on Technical University of Delft's prototype uh, situation displayed, situation state diagram, um, uh, simulated Maastricht en route airspace, um, made some simplifications. The controllers worked together with the AI. Um, moving along, I will simply say that it was en route tactical control, um, higher than current day traffic. Um, that's enough said about that. Okay. The simulation itself consisted of a, a pretest in which we trained, the, uh, we collected controllers' actual performance. And then a main experiment where the automation, the AI, the ML actually advised controllers. So what happened is um, a series of short two minute traffic vignettes en route, closing angles, aircraft coming together, controllers would resolve them. Um, we then would uh, take those training scenarios, 36 in all, and um, from the, the pretest, they would be used in a couple of ways. Eventually, we wanted to get these three conformance models. Recall the three conformance models in the main experiment, personal, group, and optimal. The way we got to them is to have controllers come in, the same 36 controllers in Italy and Sweden came in, and they performed deconfliction tasks in these little air traffic control scenarios. Those scenarios were then fed straight into a reinforcement learning process that created an optimal model, a single optimal model. The same data were fed two ways, one into a group training model where um, everybody's average fed into a um, neural net that was trained on, on the group and came out with um, specific advisories. One difficulty we learned along the way, and those who work in machine learning are familiar with this, it's difficult to train a model based on 36 samples, 36 individual. Um, each person only uh, provided 36 performances. In the end, that was insufficient to, tr to create a stable model for each person. That's lesson number one, and one way that we screwed up, um, nowhere near enough. Um, what we did then was use a synthetic process, basically, to create for each person um, a synthetic model. Basically, we faked it um, because you couldn't you couldn't train a, a neural net based on an individual's thirty six. We said, okay, well, play back to them what they did and that will look like a, um, um, a machine learning advice. Uh, the group learning was a trained, an actual trained uh, net based on uh, all of the, the data, 36 times, uh, 36 times 36 it was. Um, experimental design 
we um, varied conformance and transparency uh, within participants, measured acceptance and agreement, and keep clear what those mean. Uh, agreement is was on a scale of 100. How much do I agree with this? Acceptance was, um, did they actually implement it or not? In post-processing, we decided to refine that a bit, and we came up with a five-point scale, because it's not just as simple as, I accept that or I don't. Some would take it and nudge it by a few degrees. I like that solution, but let me give it an extra five degrees, and so on. Those were the dependent measures. Let us move on. Um, these are the dates. Again, we just wrapped up simulation in, in Sweden a few weeks ago. Preliminary results. First, workload. Um, workload shows a, a clear effect of both uh, conformance, as you go from personal to group to optimal model, workload increased. Similarly, workload decreased with transparency. Not surprising. I, I'm, I'm experiencing less workload when I'm the machine is telling me to work the way I worked. It's a little bit higher if you give me the average way of working. And an optimal, I don't know, my workload was the highest. And conversely, for transparency, workload decreased. Um, moving on, um, normalized agreement, because agreement had to be normalized within participant. People uh, offer different absolute and ranged agreement ratings. Um, they had to be normalized into z-scores within participants. What we found basically is a main effect of conformance that is um, conformance, um, what was the pattern? The pattern is that conformance seems to be lower for the group model, or, or agreement seems to be lower for the group model in all conditions. Agreement versus separation. Um, we noticed very quickly that controllers tended to fall into two groups. They would be either above or below in terms of their preferred control strategy. Some wanted to aim for 10 nautical miles, and some were happy um, uh, vectoring close to the optimal target of about six nautical miles. Those two groups differed somewhat in their um, um, performance, including their, their agreement. Um, the pattern is, is different in the two. Um, those who are, um, those who were sort of more conservative and willing to cut it close liked the optimal. Um, those who wanted to keep things far apart and safe tended not to like the optimal. A um, lot of questionnaire feedback, basically um, evidence that it was workload lowering, easy to use, that it was trustworthy, that it helped them resolve conflicts. Um, system was not better um, than they would have done. Um, the solutions were accurate and efficient, but not better than they would have done. Um, we're number of challenges. First, as I mentioned, is the machine learning data requirements. It just takes a lot of data to train. Um, we also face the uh, sort of challenge, it's a paradox, that if you have variability between controllers, you don't have the possibility of a group model. If they're not, if they're very different, there's no sense in trying to come up with a um, group model. If they're not consistent internally, you can't come up with a personal model. If they're going to do something different every five minutes, how do you come up with a model for that human that will advise them? Um, Defining conformance was difficult. Is it the direction of the turn, the value of the turn, and so on? Transparency might not always be beneficial. We came up, we started this project assuming that, oh, if you make things more transparent, they will like the algorithm more. Well, our current metaphor is transparency is like clothing. As you make things more transparent, you might like what you see underneath, and you might not like what you see underneath. It, it allows you to see underneath. If the algorithm's performance is not good, um, they will see that and tell you to put clothes back on. Um, the, uh, as I say, the analysis is ongoing. Thank you for staying awake, everybody. That's, the, uh, that's all that I've got. Mahalo, thank you.